Teenage Frankenstein, Alice Cooper from the Constrictor album. It's a happy little song, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, love song. Very little, nice. Little uh, song my mom used to hum to me when I couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think uh, when you have all these people from City? We're all you know grow crowding in in the past couple of minutes here, talking to you uh, in between the commercials and the songs and all the rest. And it must really be a, a nice surprise for you to see that nobody has forgotten you after all these years. I think we made a. a a pretty deep scar on the public <laughs> when we first came out and hopefully we're still doing that you know I mean uh, when we first came out I mean it was a dangerous thing that we were doing we were introducing uh, there was a very solid rock and roll everybody was happy with what was going on in rock and roll it was that was like you know the period where everybody was in a peace and love and boy everything was just fine you just drove and, a stake through it right just came in you know and, it, and Alice Cooper was the future at that point you know and uh, it still is in a lot of cases. I mean, people are still looking at this show and going, "That's still where it's going, yeah. towards that," you know. And I think that, that, that people expect the Alice Cooper show to be different, which they'll see tomorrow yeah, which, at Maple Leaf Garden. Yeah. I think you're only 200 seats shy of being yeah. sold out. Yeah. Last word here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those will go pretty time. fast. But that's Absolutely. great. Though. I mean, to me, that's that's a very loyal. Uh, you know, I, I I'll be as loyal to Toronto. I mean, that's that's great. You know, when you were sitting at home. In between the years that, uh, well, what you were doing back The Dark then, Ages, now, the, the Disco dark ages, ages, we'll call that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What did you think when you started hearing about the PMRC and um, the moral majority chasing some of these young upstart bands? Did you ever think to yourself, Gee, I'll, sh I'll give them something to whine about? Yeah, well, we got, you know, I mean, actually, we had, were putting this show together when the PMRC, you know, raised its ugly head, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, I raised my ugly head then right after that, you know, and said, okay, <laughs> you know. And we immediately got rated X. It, just, it was just in the New York paper. They, I guess they reviewed my life and said I'm an X-rated person. You know, I don't know who they are. I don't know who anybody is that's allowed to rate your life, you know. But it's, uh, it's kind of good, though, you know, because it gives... What they've done is they've accomplished... Where rock and roll was safe for a while, suddenly it's not so safe. Suddenly it's... Uh, we're outlaws again, and I think that's kind of good. I think that's uh, something that they've done that was very positive. Uh, I think it would, if you really wanted to get back at them, you, we would try to put a commission together to take away their Jackie Collins novels, you know, and then you'd see a lot of senators' wives going, oh, no, wait, okay, we'll leave the music alone. Just leave our, our, our love novels here, because you know, they're a lot worse than uh, sure. what we do. You know? Sure, they promote all sorts of things. Are you kidding, things. you know? <laughs> I have one in my bathroom, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Let's talk about the role of psychodrama in the, in the show that's always been so, so important to an Alice Cooper show. Is, uh, it's also made you one of the icons of rock. Well, I think that the psychodrama, is, uh, again, has come, always come naturally. We spend 80% of our time on the music. And I think that I have, I'm lucky to have this little insight of if I'm writing a song like Teenage Frankenstein or uh, a Dwight Fry or, you know, a Billion Dollar Babies, I, I kind of cheat towards the stage, and I'll write a lyric in there that I know I can use on stage as a visual thing. Um, it's, that, that's the way it's always been since day one, you know. Uh, I've always kind of like thought that the stage was just as important as the music, you know. Uh, the theatrics that we do wouldn't stand up without the music, though. If you take like a, a West Side Story or something like that and take the music out of it, it's a gang fight. You know, it's really, that's all it is. But when you get that music backing it up, then suddenly it becomes much more important. So our, our, our thing is really our music first, and then the theatrics second. Um, and the psychodrama comes right along with that. When you have a song like uh, Ballad of Dwight Fry about a guy that's in a straitjacket, and he's, you know, I mean, that's very tense. The audience is feeling every time I'm... I'm really trying to break out of that, because it's a, it's a straitjacket. I mean, you know, and when I do break out, they, they, all, they all break out with me. You know, every time Alice does anything on stage, the audience does it with him. If he picks up the crutch and raises it up on 18, they all go, yeah, because they want to be part of that. So, I mean, Alice really does sort of work as a conduit, you know, for, for the whole audience. You know. just, uh, just between us, when it really comes down to it, how close is Alice Cooper to Vincent Fernier? It's sometimes close. Other times, in, in a bad situation, I can call on Alice to help me out. You know, if I so see six win. guys that are going to kill me, you know, then I can suddenly turn into Alice and become a little more fearless. But I find that Alice is more of an alter ego for me. Alice is a character that I've always wanted to be. Uh, 
there are guys that you want to be. You look at you know guys on film and things, and you go, yeah, if I could just be a little bit more like Sean Connery, you know, or if I could you know handle that chick the way that this guy does, you know. I mean, there's always a, a certain amount of fantasy in everybody you see on film and everything. Alice is a combination of every villain ever on film, and a little bit more because he's, you know. I don't know where a lot of it comes from. I, uh, my psychiatrist would like to know where a lot of it comes from. <laughs> I don't per personally want to know where it comes from. I just enjoy being this character. When I turn in, like this is an Alice here. You know, Alice would never talk in an interview. You know, he would be much too dangerous to talk to in an interview. Yeah. He'd be sitting here with an ice pick going. You know. Is that the guy yeah. that everybody hides their children from at the yes. airport and stuff yeah. like that? They, yeah. they, well, they, they don't know that, they, that I do turn off. I, I only turn Alice on when it comes to go on stage, you know. Uh, and then I really do become Alice. I do become that character. Mm -hmm. You're living in uh, Phoenix, Arizona? In Arizona, yeah. yeah. Scottsdale. Yeah. Wife? Two yeah. kids? Yeah. yeah. Just a regular guy? I'm just a regular guy. Yeah. <laughs> don't you want to be a regular guy? Door-to-door -door ice pick salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, thanks for dropping by. Thank you. And uh, good luck. Good luck at, at the gardens tomorrow night, yeah, as well really as uh, Cops Coliseum, March 5th. That's right. And uh, we've got uh, A&A's in store coming up right after this, which I know you're going to be yeah, getting A&A's on, a &A's we, on Young Street. We drove in from the uh, airport, and there were like people already lined up there, and it was, you know, it was about six hours ago, so that's great. <laughs> Well, that's great, because this is one of the things that they're probably lining ah, up for as well. Stricter. Yeah, we've got 10 of these on the Toronto Rocks contest line right now, 872-7770. First 10 callers are guaranteed winners with Absolutely. Toronto Rocks. They should be able to know the name of this snake, though. It's a new snake. Oh, yeah. We should and talk. her name is Mistress. Oh, yeah. Okay. Shall we make it a skill testing question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I do, I do remember now. If you know the name of the snake, and you're one of the first 10 callers, you're a winner. 872-7770.